Hi, uh, in this lecture we'll be learning three kind of elementary matrix and vector operations that are going to come up quite a lot throughout this course. And those are the transpose, matrix addition, and broadcasting. So these are kind of somewhat similar. Uh, the main things these have in common is that you don't need to understand matrix multiplication, which is going to be the next lecture. So these are just a few couple, three things that we want to cover before getting there. So remember last lecture we learned about uh, vectors, scalars, and matrices and tensors. So these are just things that we can do with those. So let's start from the top there. And of course this accompanies chapter 2.1 in the deep learning textbook that this course goes with. Okay, so let's go from the top to the bottom here. So let's start with transposes. So transposes is something we can do on matrices, vectors, and scalars. And technically tensors, but it's a bit complicated, so we won't talk about that today. But if we're just talking about matrices, which is the most common, so the transpose of a matrix A is shown by this, so A transpose. So let's we'll say if A originally was something that looks like 2, 3, 4, 5, so this is a 2 by 2 matrix. Taking the transpose of this, so this would be A, if you want to take the transpose of this, basically, what you can imagine is making a little kind of uh, top to bottom, left to right kind of main diagonal of the matrix is the actual term for it, making the main diagonal across this matrix and kind of flipping it across that matrix. What you can imagine, so kind of doing a thing like that where you kind of flip it across that, what you'll end up is that this column here, this two and four becomes the first row. So the first column become, becomes the first row. So we have two and four, and the second column becomes the second row. We have three and five. So simple enough, so this is a transpose. So simple enough, those are, you know, that's how you transpose a matrix. And one thing often you want to transfer, ma transpose matrices that aren't uh, matrices that aren't square. So what we're going to do is say we have some rectangular matrix, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, say. If you want to transpose this, it's almost even more obvious because the matrix we'll get is a totally different shape. So notice this is a three by two matrix. What we're gonna get is a two by three matrix. So this co first column becomes the first row. So first column, two, six, 10, two, six, 10. Second column, four, eight, 12, four, eight, 12. And notice that this is a two by three matrix. And that's the same thing kind of going along this main diagonal here. We can also take the transpose of vectors, which is a little more simple. So we say we have some vector 3, 2, 1. If we took the vector of this, so notice that right now this is a column vector, so it's vertical, it's a list of numbers. We can turn this into a row vector, which is basically the same thing, just kind of put on its side, uh, and this becomes 3, 2, 1. So yeah, so when you transpose a column vector, you get a row vector. And one common use of this, and this is actually used a lot if you want to, uh, we'll see later often the, um, the dimensions of matrices are very important when you're trying to do uh, different operations with them, but sometimes you need them to match in certain ways. So often we have to transpose, matrix, uh, transpose vectors or matrices just to make that work. But often one just kind of trick used in textbook writing and that sort of thing to, um, define vectors in line. So say you have some paragraph talking about something in your textbook and they say uh, blah, blah, uh, blah, 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 and they said let uh, x, so if they want to define some vector in line, so they don't want to set apart a whole paragraph and they just want to define a vector, they will just kind of put it as a list of numbers. So say one, two, three, um, but technically they're defining a row vector right there. But the thing is you can't really easily put a column vector um, in line in like a paragraph of text. So what a lot of people do is they just say let x equals this and transpose just as kind of a little smart trick. So whenever you see that they're really defining a column vector because they're taking a row vector and then they're transposing it. So just kind of a simple trick that a lot of people use. Okay, so that's simple enough. And of course taking the transpose of a scalar, you never really need to do that, but sometimes that kind of shows up in when you're doing calculations with matrices. And it's just a good thing to remember that when you never take, you take, whenever you take the transpose of a scalar, it's just the same thing because it's, in a way it's a symmetrical kind of thing. When you flip it around the main diagonal, it's still five. Okay, so that's transposes. Hopefully that covers that. So next we're gonna be talking about matrix addition or vector addition. And technically, well not technically, actually, Whenever you're adding matrices or vectors, they need to be of the same size or shape. So 
say if you have some five, six, seven, eight, and some. We're going to add this to some one, two, three, four. So when we add two matrices, they need to be the same shape, and we do it element-wise. So we add this to this, we add this to this, we add this to this, we add to this to this, and we'll get a matrix that's the same shape. So let's just kind of finish the example here. So 5 plus 1, 6, 6 plus 2, 8, 7 plus 3 is 10, and 8 plus 4 is 12. So that's our resulting vector there. So some A plus some B, and that's what it is, A plus B right here. Great. Okay, so that's square vectors and square matrices. You can imagine it's the same with rectangular matrices as well. You just need to make sure they're the same shape. And sometimes maybe you'll have, and this is where transposes often come in. So you have some 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then you have some other thing here. 6, 8, 1, 2, 7, 5, why not? You have two things here, but you can't add them in the current shape. But if you transpose this, notice that that'll flip over and these will become the same shape and then you can add them. So kind of those, um, those uh, manipulations that you often have to do to add certain things or make things the same kind of shape is something that's gonna come up very often in machine learning. Okay, uh, I think we got that. Uh, notice that this is the exact same for vectors. So vectors they have to be the same length and then you just add them element wise But I won't do an example there because I feel like you guys understand and other than that I think that's about it the matrix addition. So broadcasting is the last kind of final one here So broadcasting is maybe the most complex and there's kind of a lot of uh, caveats with broadcasting, but I'm just going to talk about the general kind of general rules uh, with broadcasting. Broadcasting is kind of a shortcut. It's really not used that much in mathematics outside of machine learning applications and computer science applications. So it's almost even more of a term from computer science. Um, so if you want to broadcast, it's basically like, it's doing something that shouldn't be allowed because the dimensions don't match, but they kind of make the assumption that, you know, let me just show you. All right, so let's say we have a vector 3, 2, 1, so the same one you have there, and we have a matrix that's something like this, 2, 4, 5, 6, 1, 8, why not? Right, so we have two objects here, right? So we have something that's 3 by 1, so a column vector, and we have something that's 3 by 2. So you, we wouldn't be able to add these because they're not the same, they're not the same dimensions. But with broadcasting, we can kind of make an assumption. So let's say if this thing is x here, so that's going to be bold-faced x, and this thing is an a. If we write a plus x, technically, that's not really mathematically correct, but in kind of the world of machine learning and computer science and that sort of thing, we can do something called broadcasting. So we kind of make a safe assumption that what they mean by a plus x, they mean by taking this vector and kind of doing it element-wise with each of the columns here. Because notice that this column is the same uh, kind of length as this column here. So we can, what we can do is we can kind of think about taking this uh, vector and applying it on each of these columns. So we can do it element-wise by column in a way. So let me just kind of show this. So if we want to do some a plus x, which is technically not mathematically correct, we can broadcast this x across the columns of a. And what we end up with is we add this to each of the columns. So 3 plus 2 is 5, 2 plus 5 is 7, 1 plus 1 is 2. So that means we added this to this first column. So now let's add this to the second column. So 3 plus 4 is 7, 2 plus 6 is 8, and 1 plus 8 is 9. So that's what a plus x is, technically. A kind of less complicated version, and of course, if you can, you can also broadcast in different ways as well. If you have something that's maybe something that looks like this, so instead your vector is actually something that looks like this, so it's a row vector, and you say a plus x, then we'll assume something different. So now we're assuming that we add this to each of the rows of this just by kind of taking some context clues in. And this is just kind of to save time, so we don't have to write it longhand, and we don't have to say add this to each of the rows using mathematical notation. You can just kind of write this, and people get the point. So that's broadcasting, named as we kind of broadcast it over the terms. And another kind of final easy kind of example of broadcasting in a way is when we want to multiply a matrix by a scalar, which is technically doesn't work as we'll learn next lecture when we're talking about dimensions and multiplying matrices. But say we have something like three, four, five, and six. 
and you want to multiply that by 2. Um, this is technically something that kind of looks weird because they're not the same shape or dimension, but basically what we make the assumption we're doing is we're doing this to each of the elements. So we're kind of broadcasting this to each of the terms in a way. So our resulting matrix is 2 times 36, 2 times 4, 8, 2 times 5, 10, 2 times 6, 12. So that's kind of another example of broadcasting. But this is another example. This is the main example right here. And this is kind of what makes broadcasting special so we can do stuff like this. So kind of making safe assumptions in a way. Okay, so that's about it. And I'll talk about more kind of uh, special cases of broadcasting because it does come up a lot, especially when you're programming these things because a lot of uh, machine learning platforms and, and uh, libraries automatically include broadcasting soft uh, kind of broadcasting technology, if you could call it that, in their platforms. So you can actually do this stuff in like Python. So it often comes up there. So I will definitely be mentioning this uh, later down the line. But this is just kind of a short introduction to what broadcasting is. And that covers our three terms there. So hopefully that all makes sense. And I'll see you next lecture when we talk about matrix multiplication. See you there. Bye.